Yo, what is happening guys? It's your boy Apton here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a garage door using hatches in Lumber Tycoon 2. So if you have a wall or a building you need a secure entrance to, this may well be perfect for you. It works consistently, looks good, and keeps unwanted people out. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So to start off, you obviously need an opening in the wall or building. Now, this can be expanded, so if you want it to be wider, you can definitely do that. And guys, I will be showing you how to do that in a little bit, but for now, you just want to start off with an opening that is 11 studs high by 18 studs wide. Now, for those who do not know, a stud is basically a tiny floor blueprint and is the basic unit of measurement within Roblox. You don't necessarily need to know all of that for now because the opening size can be measured by taking a smooth wall blueprint and placing one flat on the ground against one of the sides of the opening and then place another one right next to it and then taking another one and placing it on top vertically. Now you can take a small floor and place it vertically on top of the vertical smooth wall and then place another one flat next to the smooth wall on the bottom. If you did that and there is no extra space between any of the blueprints and the wall, your garage opening should be the right size. If it isn't, then you can always remove or add to it to make it the right size. Alright, now it's time to get everything you will need for this door. Alright, so once you've gotten everything that you need, it's time to start building. So begin with all of your wood number one structures and you just want to outline the opening in your wall using the structures. So take smooth walls and place them on both sides, making sure that the structures come out two studs in the front and one stud in the back. Now take smooth wall stubs and place them on top of each smooth wall. And then just take your remaining blueprints and place them flat on top. Alright, now it's time to start placing the structures that you filled with wood number 2. Begin by taking a 1 slash 2 wedge and place it in line with the edge of the smooth wall right here, and then just place 3 more against the side of that one like so. Now take some tile blueprints, you don't have to fill these in, just place three of them on top of each other, and then place a hatch on top of it. Make sure that you place the hatch against the tiles so that there is no gap between the tile and the hatch. Also make sure that you place the hatch in this orientation with the button side facing down. Once you've done that, you can destroy the tile blueprints and then just place three more hatches aligned with the first hatch. Make sure that when you place them that they are straight and aligned. If you struggle to get them aligned, you can try placing three more tile blueprints under the area that you are struggling to place the hatch, just like with the first hatch and then place the hatch on top of those blueprints.
Now take some smooth wall blueprints, you do not have to fill these in, and place them on top of the hatches. Now place your remaining hatches on top of the smooth wall blueprints with the button side facing up. Now take your 1 slash 1 wedges and place them upside down on top of the inside of the frame and make sure that they're flush against the hatches. Alright, now it's time to start wiring. You're going to want to start off by taking a wire and placing it between two of the buttons on the top hatches. Then just take more wires and basically continue this, making sure that each wire touches the last wire as well as both hatch buttons. Now just do the exact same but on the bottom. Now use your remaining two wires to hook the bottom and the top together. And each wire in the middle between the top and the bottom like so. Now take three posts and place them like this. And then take three tiny floors and place them like this. Now take your two skinny smooth walls and place them like this. And finally take your one slash two wedges and place them like this. And that will complete the building for this garage door. Now I will quickly go over how to expand it and make it bigger if that's what you want to do, and then we can implement a way to open and close this door. So to expand this door, you can do so in increments of 4 studs. You can expand on either side, however, if you want to do so on the side that you hooked the bottom and the top hatches with wires, you'll have to rewire that once you finish. To expand this door, you'll have to get all of the required materials. Keep in mind that these materials are listed for just expanding the door by 4 studs, but if you want to expand it by something like 8 studs, you'll have to get twice the amount of each of the materials, and if you want to expand it by 12 studs, you'll have to get 3 times the amount, etc, etc, so just decide how much you want to expand your garage door, and then get all of the materials listed on screen twice, thrice, or however many increments you want to expand your door by. So you want to start off by moving your wall or whatever you had that made up the original opening and just move that over 4 studs. 
Once you do that, you can verify that it is indeed four studs by getting out a floor blueprint and placing it flat on the ground like so. If it fits snugly between both the frame and the wall, then it is indeed four studs apart. Now you can delete the floor blueprint and move the smooth wall that's part of the frame over four studs like so, and then of course the structure that was on top of it as well. Now place a one slash two edge like so, then place a new short smooth wall like so, and then you can of course fix your wall. Now you basically just want to mirror everything that is to the side, so you want to place your hatches just like how you did before. and then place your one slash one wedge in front. Then wire up your hatches. and then just finish it off, I'm pretty sure you get the point. Once you finish, if you did decide to expand your door by more than just one increment, you can just do exactly what you just did over and over for the amount of increments you wanted to expand it by until you run out of your structures. Alright, so hopefully that covered how to expand the garage door. If you have any further questions, you can post them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Now it's time to choose a way to open and close your garage door. I will be going over four of the best basic activation methods as well as some advanced ones, so just select your favorite method that works best for you. So first we have the button. To activate the door, you just have to press it. You can do this while in your car or just normally walking. Once it is pressed, it will open the garage door and it has a pre-programmed amount of time it will stay open before it shuts again. So all you have to do is press the button once, pass through, and the garage door will automatically close behind you. Additionally, only people who are whitelisted can press the button, so it is one of the more secure activation methods. It's one of the best activation methods in my opinion because of its simplicity, and I would definitely recommend using this one if you have problems with unwanted people getting into your base, and it's also relatively inexpensive, so if you are a bit short on money, that won't be an issue. The next activation method is the lever. The lever is the most simple device to set up and it is very simple to use. All you have to do is pull the lever and it will open and pull it again and it will close. Whenever you flick the lever, the state of the garage door will become the opposite. So if it was closed before, it will become open, and if it was open before, it will now be closed. This, by the way, works regardless of whether the lever on the other side is on or off. The lever activation method works consistently, it's inexpensive, and is very simple to set up. The only drawback is that it does not automatically close behind you, so you will always have to close it manually whenever you open it. But to end it on a good note, the lever activation method is very secure because much like the button, players need whitelist to use it, so no unwanted people will be able to open the door. 
Next we have the pressure plate activation method. This one is incredibly convenient because all you have to do is drive up and when your wheels or feet touch the pressure plate, the door will open. The drawback being that unwhitelisted players can use this device to open the door. That's not entirely bad if you don't mind random people walking in, it just depends on what you're using the door for. For example, if you're using this for the entrance of your base and you only want friends coming in, this is not the best activation method for you. On the other hand, if you're just using the door for a garage, random people coming in might not be too big of a deal. And the convenience of it being hands-free, and by that I mean you don't have to move your mouse to a specific spot and press a button, you just have to drive up and it will automatically open. Anyways, the convenience of that may outweigh the lack of security depending on what you're using the door for. Four. Additionally, like the button, the pressure plate will close the door automatically behind you, which does add extra convenience. The pressure plate activation method is great in terms of convenience and reliability, but falls in terms of security. Depending on how you plan to use your garage door, this can definitely be a good pick. And finally, we have the laser. This one by far is the coolest one because it's a laser, I mean, come on. It's pretty much the same as the pressure plate in terms of what it does, but instead of touching the pressure plate, you are tripping the laser. It can be activated by other players, so keep that in mind. Plus, it is the most expensive activation method. It does, however, close behind you and it's hands-free like the pressure plate, so it is convenient and just freaking cool, but there is one big reason why you would want to get this one over others, and that is because it works over any distance within your base. So it is a very good option if you plan to make your garage door wider because, for example, if you have a super wide door, you'll have to drive all the way over to press the button or lever or pressure plate, but with a laser, you can trip it and open the door from any point along the laser beam. So while it may be more expensive and less secure, those could be outweighed if you are planning on making your garage door very wide. Again, it all depends on how you are using it. Alright, so those were the main basic activation methods, now I'd just like to quickly mention some of the alternative methods for more advanced players. Keep in mind that I won't be showing you how to build or implement the following methods, so I'd only recommend the following methods for more advanced players who know how to implement these on their own. So firstly, I'd like to mention the player detector. This basically acts as a motion detector for anything that gets close enough. I will link the tutorial by Electrotech in case you want to implement this into your own garage door. This can be activated by other players just like the pressure plate and the laser so it's not quite as secure, and I wouldn't recommend it if you decide to expand your garage door to be longer, since you'll have to drive up to it on either side in order to activate the door which can become a hassle with longer doors. But this design is great in terms of looks because you can't see it from the outside at all, so if aesthetic is your main goal with this garage door, I would definitely recommend the player detector. The final thing I would like to quickly mention is the keycard and combination lock activation methods. I'll link a tutorial for how to build these in the description down below. These methods are very secure because in order to open up the door, you have to know which wood type to use, and if you go with the combination lock, you also need to know which wood type goes where. They don't automatically close behind you though, and it takes time to get the wood into the correct area, so I'd recommend this activation method if you're using the garage door for a vault or something that you want to be very secure. Alright, once you have selected your preferred activation device, it's time to actually build it. I will be going over how to build each of the four basic activation devices, so I have put in chapters on this video so that you can easily skip to the activation device you have selected, as well as timestamps on screen right now so that you can skip to the time that corresponds with your activation device that you selected, and also progress bars to make it easier for you to see which activation device I'm showing and for how long. So hopefully all of these measures will help you find your activation device. Alright, to build the button activation method, you want to start off by placing a button on the left side of your door.
and then place another button on the left of the back. Now you want to place your two signal sustains in the back, making sure that the top signal sustains output directly leads into the bottom one's input with both of the arrows pointing down. Now take a wire and place it from the output of the signal sustains on the bottom to the hatches like this. And then finally, you just want to wire your buttons to the top input of the signal sustains. Now of course make sure that all of your signal sustains are set to the maximum sustain. And that'll pretty much do it for the button activation method. Alright, to build the lever activation method, all you need to do is place a lever on the left side. Then another lever on the left side of the back. Then you want to place your XOR gate like this. Next you want to take a couple wires from the other lever to the other input of the XOR gate. Then finally, take a wire from the output of the XOR gate and hook it up to the hatches like so. Now your lever activation method should be up and running and working fine. If it isn't, then please comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you.
Alright, to build the pressure plate activation method, you're going to want to start off by placing your pressure plates one stud away from the wedges and one stud over like so, making sure that the output of the pressure plate is facing towards the door. Then do the same thing on the other side, then just do the exact same thing in the back. Now place your signal sustain in the back like so, making sure that the arrow is pointing up. Also you want to make sure that the signal sustain is set to the maximum sustain it can be. Now you want to wire all of the pressure plates together. Then hook all of the pressure plates up to the bottom of the signal sustain. And finally, hook a wire from the top of the signal sustain over to the hatches. And that'll pretty much do it for the pressure plate activation method. Alright, to build the laser activation method, you want to start off by taking a laser and placing it on the left side with the white bit facing towards the other side. Then you want to do the same in the back. Now you want to take a laser detector and place it on the other side in line with the laser, making sure that the white part faces the laser. You can verify that the laser detector is in line with the laser by turning on the laser, which you can do by pressing the button on the laser. If the laser detector provides an output, then it is in fact in line. Then do the exact same thing in the back. Now take a vehicle and trip the laser in front and in back to verify that you'll be able to trip the laser within your vehicle. If you can't, you may want to move your laser and laser detector up or down. Next you want to take a signal inverter and place it directly on a laser detector's output, making sure that the arrow points away from the laser detector. Then do the same thing for the other detector. Next, take a signal sustain and place it against a wall wherever, and make sure that the arrow points up. Now take a wire and place it from one of the signal inverters to the input of the signal sustain. Then do the exact same for the other signal inverter. Also make sure that the signal sustain is set to the maximum sustain. And finally, you want to take a wire from the output of the signal sustain to the input of the hatches like so. And that will pretty much do it for the laser activation device. And that will pretty much do it for this video. Hopefully it helped you, and if you have any questions or concerns, make sure to post those in the comment section below, and I will be sure to get back to you. And if you want a bit of a faster response, you can join my Discord and ask there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hopefully will see you in the next one. See ya!